Hi there guys and welcome back to the Tower Tech. In this episode we're going to be taking a look at my first impressions of the DJI Osmo. So I first got the idea of getting myself a handheld gimbal stabilised camera when I was at the UK Drone Show. There's a couple of videos that I've done on that previously. As I walked around the show with my DSLR on a gorilla tripod trying to desperately stabilise the footage, not being able to walk or move, just standing still trying to capture videos of the drones in particular, the bebop dance. Uh, what, what I found was an enormous rig that was really cumbersome, very difficult to carry around. Just as I'm struggling with all of this, past me walks a very sensible looking chap with this in his hand. He had a Rode Shotgun Mic Pro mounted on the bottom and he had his iPhone on the side and it was evident immediately to me that this was really small, really compact and really easy to manoeuvre. Absolutely ideal for taking to a show like that. So as I reflect on this, as I think about all of the footage that I do, wandering out and about, taking the drone, trying to capture footage for you guys, it started to strike me that there must be a better solution. So of course, I immediately went on the internet, started looking at the various options, and essentially these boil down to the GoPro Gamma, we all know what happened to that drone, and the Osmo from DJI. And I have to say, I'm very impressed with this as a product. The footage that it shoots is absolutely fantastic. Silky smooth, really fantastic when you're out and about. Particularly impressed with how well it copes with when you're walking. Now I do know there is a Z-axis accessory that is available from DJI to complement the Osmo, I have to say, with a bit of bent knee ninja type walking, I found that I could get very, very smooth footage with the Osmo without the Z-axis attachment on it, so I, I may or may not get that into the future. But given that this is relatively cheap at around the £520 mark, I'm pretty impressed with the footage I've got. It will shoot in 4K at 30 frames a second, and it will do 1080p up to 60 frames a second. The device is very small and very portable, and it comes with a very handy hard case that you can fit absolutely everything that you need inside. You get the camera, you've got the battery inside the handle, and you've got a handy attachment for putting your phone in. This is all spring loaded, so it doesn't matter what size of phone you've got. I've got an iPhone 7 Plus, and I have absolutely no problems getting that device in, into the DJI Osmo. I have to say the device is very easy to use. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos suggesting that the device is quite difficult to attach to your camera using Wi-Fi connection and the proprietary DJI Go app. I have to say I had absolutely no problems whatsoever. So once you've powered the camera on, you've got your phone into the mount. All I had to do was just select the DJI Go app and just wait until the Wi-Fi connection established itself because I'm outside of range of my normal Wi-Fi at home. The only Wi-Fi that the phone was associated with was the one on the Osmo and it immediately connected and off we went. Now you might be wondering why it is that I chose to go for the Osmo rather than the Osmo Mobile. You've got an iPhone 7 Plus I hear you cry, Michael, it's got an absolutely fantastic camera. Well let me explain to you why. The Osmo allows you to disconnect the gimbal off of the top of the handle and this allows you to do a number of different things. There's an extension cable that you can get so that you can mount your camera separately to the handle so you can mount it on the dash of your car or you can put it on a helmet if you're riding a motorcycle. So essentially what you get is GoPro type footage except it's stabilised. The gimbal is stabilising the shot so it smooths out all of the jumps and bumps from, from your footage. The other great accessory, it's not a DJI one that I've seen, is an extension pole that adds two feet to the length of the device. You, again, you've got all of the gimbal stabilization and you can do very tall crane shots, you can capture very low shots very easily or you can hang out of car. 
to catch shots like that. So it's the flexibility of the device that really attracted me to it. You can also get replacement cameras. So this is the X3. There is an X5 and an X5 RAW, which gives you professional DSLR type cameras that have removable lenses that can attach to them. Now these are professional grade cameras and you can't do this with the Osmo Mobile. The device can't be disconnected from the handle in this way. It is a self-contained unit. There's no ecosystem that sits around it that you can integrate into it to give you the flexibility that you can get with this sort of device. Of course, if you're interested in the Osmo Plus, which has a zoom feature in it, you can replace the X3 with the X3 zoom if you feel so inclined. Now I have to say, I don't really understand why DJI put the zoom feature into the camera in favour of aperture control because my observation as I was out and about using the device is you're constantly having to adjust the shutter speed in order to compensate for the brightness. So this has a fixed aperture of 2.8 which is quite wide so if you're out in particularly bright conditions then you're going to get oversaturated picture it's going to be well overexposed and the only way in which I could compensate for that is to uh, crank the shutter speed up. Now, I would say that an absolute must accessory for this is a set of ND filters. I don't have these yet. Particularly ones, you know, that give you a two stop, three stop variants that effectively bring the exposure down. The Osmo comes with a little cover attached on the front here which you can remove just by unscrewing and then you can get compatible ND filters that screw on the top. Now that's going to solve your exposure problems. My other observation is that its performance under high ISO is nowhere near as good as my Canon 70D noticeable grain in the background that really was pronounced and I'm not sure that this is particularly the sort of camera that you would be using to take home snaps inside your house the lighting conditions are, are just not going to be suitable enough but the real frustration with having to constantly adjust the shutter speed up and down is that you can't obey the 180 degree rule the 180 degree rule says that whatever your frame rate is you should double that for your shutter speed so I'm filming at 30 frames per second so I should have a 1 60th of a second shutter rate now I had to move that up materially in order to compensate for the overexposure that I was getting so I was ending up at a shutter speed of 1 200th of a second which sharpens your image but it creates quite a unpleasant sense of motion that can make you feel quite ill if you watch it for too long. Conversely in very low light conditions I was having to dial that right back to 1 30th of a second which was noticeably mushing the picture you were getting a bit of blurring around the edges etc. So DJI if I had one plea to you ditch the zoom don't really understand why you'd want to zoom on a camera like this and add in aperture control. That will help solve the overexposure problems that we've all got when we're out and about using these things outdoors. The other thing to mention here, guys, is out of the box, the Osmo uses the 2.4 gigahertz frequency range for your wireless. As your mobile phone communicates to the Osmo, it's gonna create interference with your audio. So the first thing you need to do is go into the DJI GO app and change to the 5 GHz frequency range. So in summary guys, it, this is an absolutely fantastic product. I've never used a camera that stabilizes footage in quite this way, but much like a DSLR, it is going to take some fine tweaking and tuning in order to get your video right. I'm going to make some more videos, probably in the context of other stuff, most likely flying drones, but I will reference back to the video quality and the settings that I'm using in the Osmo. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. If you're not subscribed, please do so by bashing that button there. And I'll see you in my next video.